What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. It's been a minute since we put out a video. Uh, things have been pretty slow here through the spring season. I actually haven't even gotten my boat out of storage, but in the meantime, I've been keeping myself busy with going through some of the baits I used really heavily last year that need a little TLC and also thinking in terms of new tactics and techniques that that I wanted to uh, attempt this year because as an angler I like to set goals for myself every year and push myself to get a little better and try something that's maybe a little bit outside of my comfort zone. So I wanted to make this quick video for you guys talking through two bait types that I'm particularly excited for as well as the related rod and reel setups I plan to utilize when, when running those, those baits and those tactics. So let's not waste any more time, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first bait style that I'm super excited for, particularly in the spring here, uh, on, the, on the bodies of water that I target, is a glide bait. I've used gliders the last couple years with very, very, very limited success. Um, generally, I found that they don't all run consistent consistently, and, and it can be a little challenging to target fish, and, and boat side in particular, they're, they're extremely challenging. I probably never had the correct rod and reel setup to be fishing them so I was trying to make it work on the things I had. Admittedly my rods were probably a little bit too heavy action. I was probably using too heavy a leaders and maybe too heavy a line. Um, so the, the bait I'm, I'm really excited for in particular is actually made by my buddy Mike Conklin. I met Mike at the muskie battle last fall and we hit it off really well. We've stayed in touch ever since and I had to make a couple versions of this bait for me but this is actually a new bait that he just released this year. Um, and it's the glitch pedigree. So this is a six inch glider. Uh, and what makes this bait really unique, if you can see this, is it has a tomahawk blade on the backside of the bait here. And um, where I think that blade is gonna be really beneficial is boat side tactics with gliders. I mean, if you have a glider that has a soft tail or no tail at all, you bring it into the boat, Oftentimes what ends up happening is it's very difficult to maintain that erratic action on that bait close to the boat, particularly with longer rods. I think with this bait, and, and I'll get into something special about this bait in just a second, but I think with this tomahawk blade on the back of this bait, it's really going to help boat side because it's less about the side to side movement of the bait and that spinner moving behind the bait to keep that fish engaged on the bait. And you can potentially fish it more like a bucktail. I mean, I'll defer to Mike on that. Um, and I'm going to get it uh, in the water and, and try it both side, but my hope is that I can eliminate that action and, and essentially bring it through the eight more akin to a bucktail where you'd speed up a little bit through the turn and then hang it in the outside corner. Uh, so super excited about that. Um, at first blush, I haven't used this bait yet, obviously. Super high quality, guys. I mean, the work that Mike does on this in terms of paint, epoxy, all of the components is just super, super impressive. I can't wait to get this in the water and, uh, if you, if you haven't seen Mike's original glitch in action, Glenn McDonald with 54 or bust, I'll, I'll link his video down below, uh, actually has a really good video where he did a bunch of underwater footage on gliders. And the unique thing about Mike's bait is that you can actually straight retrieve this bait and it has kind of a wandering action to it. Um, so you don't necessarily have to fish it totally like a glider. It could be a, a true straight retrieve, pull pause type bait, which makes it special, which is why I think boat side, it's really going to um, benefit and hopefully convert more fish through the aid at the boat as compared to maybe some of your traditional glider setups that I've, I've used in the past. So super excited for this. Let's jump into the rod and reel setup I plan to use with a smaller glide bait like this right now. So the rod and reel I plan to use with the glitch pedigree is this setup right here. This is actually a, the rod itself is a eight foot six chaos tackle surgical strike. I went back and forth between, do I want an eight foot rod or an eight foot six? And I figured both side, particularly with Mike's bait, the glitch pedigree, I, I wanted a little bit longer rod, get a little bit more of a wide reach through the eight um, with that additional six inches of length. Because I'm throwing mostly smaller baits on this setup, this, this surgical strike is, is, a much lighter rod. I think Chaos actually has it, don't quote me on this, but I think they have it classified as a medium heavy. Um, I, I plan to use a smaller reel. And what I went with was this PC Fun Alley Haas 300. And my wife actually ran this reel last year with the power handle in the high speed gear ratio. 
Um, and I was super impressed with it for the price point. And she doesn't fish nearly as much as me, so I, I didn't feel like a Tranks was maybe worth the investment for the amount of time she's on the water. If she continues to get more in, into the sport, we'll probably eventually upgrade. But uh, I was super impressed with it, so I decided to go with uh, the double paddle handle here with the high gear version. I believe it's a, don't quote me, but I think it's a 7, 9 to 1 ratio on this reel, which means it, it picks up you know 36 to 40 inches of line per crank depending on how much line you have on your spool so um, like I said the the glide bait presentation is more of a niche application for me so I didn't feel as though spending three hundred dollars on a reel was maybe worth it at this point in time let's see how it goes this year let's see how it works for me um, I'm sure it'll work great and um, maybe someday we'll upgrade the, the rod and reel but as a weekend warrior I'm not a fishing guide by any means it's hard to invest in seven or eight different rod and reel setups with 300 bucks a reel so you have to cut corners somewhere i did it with this i think i'm going to be really happy with the setup based on how it performed for my wife last year uh, i'm running this with uh, i don't know how well you guys will be able to see this on camera but this is 65 pound Cortland master braid uh, i went with a lighter line for the smaller baits and then pairing this up it's hard to see on the rod but i'm actually running if you can see that and it'll focus these are stealth tackle spring leaders uh, it's a lighter straight wire leader uh, with a solid metal ring i run split rings on all my baits so it works out well for me but it it's missing the barrel swivel which is really key to getting good presentation and movement out of small glides um, so that's kind of the setup for the glide baits i think it'll be super useful uh, maybe i'll do a recap at the end of the season after i put put some use on it and hopefully i can um, give you guys kind of my thoughts on it with a with a fish in the bag here coming up shortly for opener but super excited for this setup i think it's going to work wonders in kind of the smaller time frames i'm using it in more of this niche glide bait small crank type applications so so the second bait uh type that i'm super excited for is actually less about the bait type and more about the tactic itself so uh, let's jump into the bait first and then I'll discuss why I'm excited for the tactics. So the bait itself is a 13 inch gramma and hopefully that'll focus for you guys. There it is. 13 inch gramma. Uh, super excited for this bait. It's, it's obviously a large, big, imposing bait, but that's what muskies like late in the fall. Um, and I think it'll be super successful because it's more of a shallow diving, uh, large crank bait. I, I believe, don't quote me on this. Um, but I think it's three feet of depth for every 15 feet of line. So if you're running 30 feet of line back behind the boat, you're at roughly six foot depth. Uh, so you can, you can really kind of tailor this into the water, water column wherever you think that specific bite window is or to run just above your structure or to just nick your structure. Uh, it should be really easy to kind of configure that based on the line you have out. Uh, the reason I'm excited for trolling is everybody's been there. You've casted for three, four days straight on a trip to Canada. Um, or you're in the fall and your reels are freezing up or you're trying to new, learn a new lake or you're sore, you're mentally shot because you've been at it for four hours and you just need a break from uh, the casting grind. It, it's super important to remain mentally sharp at all times, especially when you're fishing lakes where the fish are on the spot, on the spot. You don't want to get lazy when the time comes and you finally get that fish to follow. It always feels like as soon as you've lost all hope, that's when the fish shows up and half the time you're unprepared for it. Um, so what I'm planning to do with trolling is on baits that aren't mapped, I plan to leverage trolling as a way to learn the water, figure out where the structures are, and auto chart at the same time. Come in, It will come in super handy on Eagle, which doesn't have good lake maps. Um, and I'm also excited to, to try it uh, late in the fall and when you know things are tough, kind of that midday lull, uh, fish aren't converting. Or, or you're not seeing fish, a different tactic to kind of take that mental break and uh, still keep lures in the water and, and hopefully up your odds at catching a fish with a different tactic. I think people, and, and myself included, maybe limit themselves a little bit by sticking only to casting, and this is something that I want to learn a little bit more about. Last year my boat wasn't really set up for it, I didn't have the right rod and reel set up for it, uh, so I invested a little bit this year in some of that stuff and I'm hoping to apply that throughout this season and I'm super excited for it. So let's jump into uh, the rod and reel combination that I plan to utilize when trolling baits such as this 13 inch grandma or even smaller baits for that matter.
So the rod and reel combination that I plan to use for trolling applications is a Chaos of Tackle, nine foot trolling and live bait rod with an Okuma cold water size 303 reel. This is a line counter reel, has a super nice clicker on it. Um, and it'll really help me kind of dial in how far back the baits are off the rod tip and about how deep they are in the water column. Uh, the rod itself is a fiberglass blank. It can be double purpose as a sucker rod, so that's part of the reason for this setup here uh, is I, I plan to use this for trolling and then also sucker season because of the awesome clicker on this reel. I'm running a 100 pound Cortland Master Braid. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. And then a uh, Stealth Tackle 130 pound trolling leader with the snap at the end. Trolling is about the only time I'll use a snap on the end of my leaders. Uh, it's actually a 36 inch leader. You want a longer leader when you're trolling just in case you're, you're running into rock structures or things of that nature where you don't want the abrasion on your line. You want the leader to take the bulk of that. Um, so I think this will be a super good setup for both suckers and trolling, particularly the bigger baits like the grandmas, but even down to like 22 shorts and shallow invaders and um, depth raiders and, and shallow raiders. So super excited for this setup um, and, and can't wait to get, get a line wet in the water trolling and learn some new water and mapping out some new structure. That's all I have for you guys today. I appreciate you uh, watching this video and hopefully you can take something away from my setup. If you have any questions on why I'm running particular gear um, or about trolling or glide bait presentations in general or anything for that matter, don't hesitate to send me a message and, and I'm always happy to help. Uh, I appreciate all the support from everybody who has you know, interacted with me on this channel and hopefully I can continue to bring you some, some really cool and interesting content that you can take something away from. and and you guys find it enjoyable. We have a, a ton of exciting stuff coming up this year. Uh, multiple trips to Canada, maybe some late northern Wisconsin fall sucker season uh, adventures as well, and and the, the typical weeknight and, and weekend grind, right? So I'm um, super excited for it, but that's all I have. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.